Okay, let's come back to vanilla options. So after the European case, let's finally consider the American case. Now, conceptually speaking, the difference between an American option and a corresponding European option is not big. The big difference is that while in the European case you can only exercise your option at maturity, that is to say at time capital T, for what concerns the American options, you can exercise your option at any time between time zero and time capital T. So an important problem in the American setting is to verify, is to identify what is the optimal exercise time. Since we can exercise the option between zero and capital T, what we want to do, what we want to know is when it is best exercised. So when can we maximize our payoff from the, from the option? Now here we will see that there is a fundamental difference between the call and the pull. While in the European setting, the call and the put obviously have different formulas, but the modeling is essentially the same. So we end up with two formulas that are very similar. So what changes is the fact that obviously my position of buying and selling is different. And so the formula is different, but from a mathematical point of view, from a conceptual point of view, the formulas are essentially the same type of formula. What we see is that in the American case, conversely, there is a very important difference between the call and the put. For what concerns the put, if we assume that the underlying asset does not pay any dividend, we will see that the American call essentially behaves as a European call. So the optimal strategy is to wait until maturity in order to exercise in case the, the option. For what concerns the put, conversely, we will see that it's a much more complicated situation. And actually, no analytical solution is available. In order to get an analytical solution, we will have to consider a very specific type of American put. That is to say, what we call the perpetual American put. In other words, it's an American put whose maturity tends to plus infinity that you can imagine in practice is not something very common but nevertheless it can be very useful for different reasons that we will see together now why did i tell that uh, we are considering an, an asset that does not pay dividends because in the case of a dividend paying asset also the american call can become cumbersome to treat and in particular what it becomes very important is the comparison between the dividend yield and the interest rate, R, the risk-free rate. Why? Because if, for example, R becomes negative, as we know it can be the case, given what we see around us and what we have seen in the last years, then the American call becomes a highly tricky object. But we will be back on that later. For the moment, let's just consider the very simple setting of an asset that does not pay any dividend. And let's see why the American coal in this framework behaves like a European coal. Again, when we consider American options, the big difference is that we can exercise the option at any time between zero and capital T. This apparently small difference with respect to the European setting has, in reality, big consequences, in particular for what concerns the American put, for which we do not have an analytical closed solution. So, as usual, let's assume that the value of the underlying asset follows a geometric running motion. And let's see what happens when we consider the American call. In particular, we will see that in this very basic setting, the optimal strategy is to wait until maturity. In order to play with the American call, we need a little lemma that tells us something very important for what concerns martingales and convex functions. So let MT be a martingale with respect to a given filtration. 
let tau smaller than capital T be a stopping time. Now let's consider a function phi which is convex. Then what we can show is that the expectation of phi of m tau is always smaller than equal to the expectation of phi of m capital T. Now, since mt is a martingale, we know that the expectation of m capital T when we condition with respect to the information at time tau, this expectation is equal to m tau almost surely. Now, what we need to do is just to apply the Jensen inequality and to observe the following. Using the tower rule, the expectation of phi of m capital T can be written as the expectation of the expectation of phi m capital T conditioned with respect to f tau, so the filtration at time tau. This needs to be larger than equal to the expectation of phi of the expectation of m capital T condition to uh, f tau because of the Jensen's inequality. But then it is just a trivial application of the property of our martingale that the expectation of m capital T condition with respect to f tau is m tau, so we substitute and we can prove our lemma. We then have an important theorem that tells us that the optimal strategy for the owner of an American call is to hold the option until its expiration, that is to say the optimal time tau is nothing more than capital T. So let's consider a value of tau smaller than or equal to capital T necessarily. We have that when we exercise the option in tau the value is s tau minus k plus, okay, because obviously we are exercising a time tau. Now, what we have is that if we discount the expected payoff of the option exercise at time tau, that is to say e to the minus r tau, the expectation of the payoff, this is smaller than or equal to the expectation of what? Of s tau discounted with respect to time tau, and for what concerns the strike price, we substitute e to the power minus r tau with e to the minus r capital T. And since tau is smaller than or equal to capital T, this inequality is trivially verified. Now, what we can observe is that according to the first fundamental theorem of asset pricing, the discounted price process is a martingale with respect to its natural filtration, that by the way is the filtration generated by the Brownian motion that is included in the geometric Brownian motion. Moreover, we can observe that the payoff of our option is a convex function for what concerns the price process. What follows is that the payoff of the option is maximized in capital T, so the optimal strategy is to wait until maturity. So this is all we have to say for American codes when the underlying asset is a standard asset that does not pay any dividend. We will see that if we introduce dividends, something changes. So for the moment, let's consider the American put, which is a much more interesting case for us.